Hi everyone, Research Geek is here um, and you are duly invited to geek out with me. <laughs> I just wanted to show you what I've been doing for the past few weeks, which is making a card catalogue for my Egyptology books and their indexes. So I have been using these cards, um, which I cut from some A4 white card, just normal stuff you can get in craft shops and I have been making the indexes from my cards go into subject specific uh, from my books rather go into sub subject specific cards in a mope Ikea drawer and I'm hoping to fill at least three of the drawers in my drawer unit um, although currently I've only filled one so the, the structure of this drawer which is I would say just about full um it could do with a few cards taking out just so that i've got some space to actually be able to flick through um just so that you know what it's full of is um a list of the cards in alphabetical order each card is for one letter although i'm going to have to start uh, doing second cards for some letters um, and then the alphabetical section and then these cards are ones that I messed up on, so I'm using them for um, some stuff I'll tell you in a second. And then the blank cards that I've got left. And I am going to have to buy some more card and cut some more cards for um, the other drawers soon. But I wanted to just give you a bit of a, an overview of what I'm doing. And maybe this will be helpful if somebody else wants to do something like this because I know this isn't the traditional use for a card catalogue but this is what I want to do for my own research so if you are under the age of let's say 25 I don't think you will really have come across a card catalogue before unless the um, library that you're using is particularly old-fashioned I went to the University of Liverpool and in the School of Archaeology, Classics and Egyptology they used to have a library for those subjects in the basement, uh, not in the basement but in the ground floor. Um, it's no longer there, it's been moved to the actual arts library but they used to have a card catalogue and this would have been the same as every other library would have had before let's say 1984 or so my mum used to work in um in a, a university library and so she knows of library card catalogues very well and until they really started to use computer electronic catalogues this is what they used so i haven't got any examples to show you but basically you would go through um the the card catalogue and pull out a card and it would say on it the name of a book and the name of the author and um, they could be categorised um, alphabetically by author or alphabetically by book and so you could have two cards for the same book in there because you might know that it's by um, John Smith but you may not know the name of the book and so you're able to um, find out all the books that John Smith wrote but my, cat my card catalogue is different in that it transcribes the indexes of my books, but um, I haven't yet made one with the actual names of the books on there. Although I think I will do that just so that it can be a bit more geeky and a bit more relevant to original library card catalogues. But basically, um, I wanted to have a really thorough transcription of all the indexes of my Egyptology books so that when I'm I'm researching I am able to know that I have got every single um, page reference to a specific subject matter within um, so for example if I was doing research on um, ancient Egyptian foods specifically food made with cereals I would be able to look up um, you know the um, specific wheats and if I'm currently researching emma wheat I would be able to control f find emma the word emma in my um, electronic version of my index and then I'd be able to bring up 
every book that had uh, a page on Emma Wheat. And I started to do that. And I did it in a table so that I had um, the first column was the word. Second column was what category it goes into. Third column was the um, the book and the page. And the book wasn't even written out. I was using a number system, which I'm still using. And the fourth um, column was something. It was space to write some notes or something. And I did four books and it was over 100 pages long for this table. And it was four books. And I don't know how many books I've got, but I've probably got about at least 30 books. And so that would have been hundreds and hundreds of pages long. So I've decided to geek out completely and do a card catalogue version, which obviously isn't as functional as an electronic version because I can't search as easily. But if I'm clever about it, I will be able to find everything through cross-referencing. So um, here's a couple of good cards that I'm going to show you as examples. But the first thing that I'm going to show you is that I've got these cards that are alphabetical to show me what cards are in those alphabetical sections. So um, it's just literally a list of the cards. So these are quite good because I can find what subjects I've got. So if I'm looking for a, a something to research, I can just flick through here and go, oh, the Fayoum, that's a good idea. I'll research the Fayoum today. Uh, so they, these are really simple. But then um, I might, I'm not sure whether I'm going to put them in the alphabetical order. So the A card under A at the beginning and then the B card under B or keep them at the start of the drawer, at the front of the drawer in the pile of these cards so that they're easier to grab hold of. Then I have got um, a card right at the beginning, which is a otherwise known as card, an AKA card, because I have to decide as I'm writing what I'm going to call certain things. And in Egyptology, as well as in other subjects, I imagine, you've got different names for the same thing. So, for example, the... Um, town of Tel El Amarna or the village of Tel El Amarna is also called Amarna and the ancient name Akhetaten. So I've had to tell my future self that if I'm looking for it, I don't look under the word Amarna, I look under the word Tel El Amarna. So that's an indicator for where to look. And then I've just got the actual cards themselves and they're all in alphabetical order divided by these dividers I made and I made the little tabs here out of a uh, die tag um, divider thing die um, so I cut a load of them cut them in half so that I could glue them either side of the actual card like so so that they're the with two card thicknesses and that they had space for me to be able to actually glue them and then um, write the letter on. And then I've got my cards that I went wrong on. So, for example, that one, I, I thought it was a bit messy and I wrote too close to the edge um, for the little, sh the little um, chevrons. I guess they're called um, there and so I use these cards for if my pen isn't working properly I can just scribble on it to get the pen going but also if I want to be able to mark what place I'm at in the index of a book um, I'll just put my paperweight there I can just have that on there so I can see where I'm currently looking in the page I also use them so if I'm for example I've taken the serials card out so that I can put it back easily once the ink has finished drying because the um, the ink in my pen is quite wet um, I put it where I have actually taken that card out so it goes there oh I think I've still got that yeah there nope <laughs> this isn't working this is why I have to um, start filling up a second drawer because it is too full. So that when that's been sitting there drying for a couple of minutes and I'm now sure it's dry and I'm ready to put it back, all I have to do is just to... <laughs> that didn't work. It's just to flick to it and take the card out and it's easy to put away. Um, and then I've got all my blank cards at the back. 
So now that I've shown you that, I'm going to show you the actual cards and how I'm actually... Uh, I've put that useful card back. Let me get it back. It's a really good example of a card. So now I've got to find it again. Didn't actually mean to put that back. There we go. Um, so... I've chosen these two cards, clothing and cereals. The first thing that I do is write the name of the subject at the top. And then if I've got a page in a book that is relevant to the overall subject, but not relevant. Well, I mean, it, it is relevant to a subsection, but it's overall to the to the whole subject. I start on the left edge of the card here whereas if I've got something that's relevant only to a subsection I draw a little chevron or, or whatever that symbol is called and then I write it indented and so um, then I write the number of the book so basically the first book I pick up out of my collection of books out of my library I just called it number one it's not my favorite book it's not the first book I bought it's just the book first book I picked up so there's one two three four five and this is actually sitting on top of a saucepan lid holder thing which I actually bought to um, be able to put my filofaxes on something that would mean that they wouldn't all be um, pressing against each other and possibly indenting the leather uh, if the clasp was pressing against the back of the pre of the next um, file of facts, that it would work. But that means it's a bit tall for my shelf, so I've reused it to put my books on. And I think this is really good because it stops me having to have a pile of books, which means I have to keep moving the top books to get to the bottom books. That's um, Daisy barking. So I would get book one. Which is that one there, The Pharaoh Life at Court and on Campaign by Gary J. Shaw. And I would go to the page in the index, which is about clothing, or the, the section of the index, which is about clothing, write the number corresponding to the book, and then write the page numbers. Easy peasy. And then if I were to find something that is relevant to that subject, um, like, for example, um, barley or kilts or whatever i draw a chevron and then i write the word hyphen and then ah i've just realized on this one i haven't actually done the page number uh, the, the book number i don't know whether it starts on page six or whether that's book six i'm gonna have to look at that one and and fix that that's a problem now i'm gonna have to go back through all of these six books and see which book it was relevant to and um, i'll do that later so i would i would do the the book number and then i'll do all the page numbers so um if you know anything about ancient egypt you might think well hold on there's stuff that's relevant to clothing that isn't on this card obviously i haven't finished yet but you might want to talk about um the process of weaving and of actually making clothes and um, also maybe talking about what the kings wore and so that would be in the royal regalia section which I have got in R and it is one of my most written on cards there it is because there is a lot of royal regalia that the kings wore and um, so what I would do then to cross ref cross reference is I write on the back of the card see also and I've got my cross reference subjects there so then in cereals I obviously have baking food brewing economy and the subsection grain prices and I should really have a subsection for agriculture as well so if I were to go to one of those cards for example baking which is there I have got a cross reference on the back to cereals so that's how that works um I don't know if there's anything else I will be able to tell you about this so I'm quite pleased with it it's taking a lot of work I haven't been able to do every entry from an index because 
some things I'm not sure which section to put them in. Um, as you can see, there are some things in here that have quite... This is um, Nicholas Reeves' Egypt's First the False Prophet Akhenaten book. Um, this is going to have a lot of stuff about Akhenaten and the Amarna period and some other relevant things um, relating to the New Kingdom and the kings from the New Kingdom and not just Amarna but the other places that Akhenaten ruled from or originally ruled from like Thebes um, temples that he built elsewhere in Egypt that kind of thing so for example you've got a lot about the Arten and then only a bit about other places so like I've only got one page number about Asia Minor and Astarte two pages about Aswan but a lot about the Arten and then you've got some sections where you've got Obviously, this is going to have a lot because it's about this king, but it's Akhenaten and you've got all the page numbers relevant to him, but then a lot of subsections. I am very slowly going through it to make sure I put things in the right place because I'm not 100% sure that I want to put um, certain things under the Akhenaten card. Or maybe I will want to make its own subsection a card for that specific subsection. So I'm going through it very slowly because I'm not sure where I want to put certain things yet um so it's a very slow process I'm going to need to keep coming back to books there are going to be books where I haven't finished um writing out their indexes I've also got things that even though I know a lot of the things in these indexes some of these things I haven't heard of or I'm not very familiar with um so particularly certain places um, for example, Abu Kua, Armont, um, Berenike, places like that. I don't know um, the relevance of them. I don't know what they are important for. So I don't know what section they'll go in. So I started to do a little bit of research about some of the, the um, subjects that I'm not familiar with from this book which is Toby Wilkinson's Genesis of the Pharaohs um, and then started writing about them and then when I knew what section they were going I'll tick them off um, but then there's there's certain things like for example Derwe people there it's a, a type of um, a category of pre-dynastic art on pottery it's these are the people represented in the decoration of the pottery. So it's named after the people. Do I put them under pottery? Do I put them under pre-dynastic period? Do I have a subsection card for pre-dynastic pottery? I don't know. So this is all a huge work in progress. And I guess it is kind of um, a little bit of stimming, which is a term used um, particularly relevant to people on the um, autistic spectrum for um, a behaviour that is quite um, calming and um, it, it's a nice activity to do that you enjoy that is quite easy to continue doing when the it's maybe something in the wider situation isn't as um is maybe stressful for you so i do recognize this as me procrastinating over actually doing the research and actually um me stimming but it's not it's not hurting me it is a it's a positive activity because i don't want to research and then realize that i've missed something and when i can't come back to that subject but um I am not actually doing the research at the moment, so I do need to get on with that. But uh, I did want to show you this today. So thank you very much for watching. And um, maybe I'll do a, a little tour of my uh, Mope IKEA unit, which is where this comes from, in future when I've finished it. It may be a few years away because obviously this is taking me a long time. But it's... Um, 
maybe going to be an interesting video if I if I show you the Mopé unit because I'm hoping to have decorated it maybe in a steampunk style or an old library drawer style and I might have more stuff in there than just the card catalogue so I might be able to show you some more research geeky stuff then. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye!